headquarters in beautiful downtown Jacksonville. I'm Daniel Austin. I'm your Speaker Summit host, and we are live with Maya Penn of Maya's Idea Shop. So welcome, Maya. Maya, we're on a little bit of a delay, so I'm going to throw questions your way, and then I'm going to let you talk, okay, so we can make this work for you. I'm okay. really excited to talk to you today. Um, so why don't we start off just by talking a little bit about you. Give us some background for those that aren't familiar with you and what you do. So my name is Maya Penn. I'm 15 years old and I'm the CEO of my company, Maya's Ideas. Um, I make eco-friendly clothing and accessories and um, I'm also into technology and I have my own um, nonprofit as well. Um, so that's just a little quick rundown about me. Awesome. So what inspired you to learn code at such a young age? That seems like something that's such a hot topic right now, getting young people to learn code. So how did you get started in that, and what was that like for you? Well, how I first got into code was I was originally into um, fashion, and I started my own, you know, fashion company, Maya's Ideas. And I, you know, for a long time, I was just kind of on another um, post for my, to where I sold my items. Um, but I really wanted to learn how to make my own website and like have my own kind of professional looking website. Um, and so I started looking up how to build websites and then I came across HTML. And from there, I was, I was 10 at the time, so I started just researching more and more about HTML um, and learning it. And I just opened the notepad document and started, you know, writing out my first um, little website uh, and just running it in Firefox and, and, and from there I was really just you know hooked on coding and um, now I'm learning other languages such as uh, JavaScript and Python. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about what kind of validation you received. Obviously, you started your business at such a young age. So what gave you that confidence? What gave you that ability to think, I can do this and I can get started on my own? So the validation I got really was um, when I first started making my designs, my, my first designs were like little headbands that I would um, make out of ribbon. Um, and I would like wear a lot of my designs, you know, while I was out maybe like shopping with my parents or uh, something like that and you know people would stop me and say you know that's really cute uh, where did you get it and you know I was only like eight at the time so when I told them that I designed um, my, dis my own clothing they were really surprised and they were wondering if I had like any more that I could you know sell or where they could get some and I thought you know it would be really cool if I started my own company and that's basically the foundation that I got just friends, family, and maybe even some random strangers stopped me and saying that my designs were cute. So you gave a TED Talk when you were 13. I'm a big fan of your TED Talk. I love it. I see that it's been viewed over a million times online, which is just must feel incredible for you. Tell me a little bit about that experience, what it was like to give that talk, and, and tell me about what it feels like to get your idea spread like that all over the world to over a million people. So the way I came up with um, what to talk about, um, I basically just wanted to really tell my story and um, share my, what I'm passionate about to other people because um, I did know that TED was a really big platform and I've actually been a fan of TED Talks um, for quite a while. So when I learned that I was going to be actually giving a talk, I was totally surprised and um, so excited and I really wanted to take the opportunity to share my story and also encourage other people to really follow their passions, um, do what they love and make the planet a better place. You know, one of the things that I think is so incredible about you, Maya, is that you started your business with this idea in mind of not just doing business, but doing good as well. And I think that's really incredible and also really on trend. I feel like people want to support businesses that they know are doing good in the world. People want to shop for things that they know are good for the environment. And how do you think that you at such a young age could see that about the way that business was going, that you had to have this aspect of social responsibility and transparency in what you're doing? How did you come up with that when you you were so young when that's something that business people that have been in business forever have been trying to capitalize on? 
Um, so, you know, really the kind of uh, social entrepreneur aspect has always been, you know, instilled in me since I was really little. Like, my parents taught me uh, when I was little about giving back to the environment and the community, and that's, you know, just something you should always do. Um, and I knew, you know, whatever I did in life, whatever job or career, whatever I decided to do, that I wanted to incorporate that in some way. And so when I started my um, company, My Eyes Ideas, um, I thought that, you know, it would be really cool to make my products safe for the environment. Because I had um, learned about how some of the dyes in clothing or like the process of uh, making the items is harmful to the people and the planet. So I really wanted to do something about that. And um, from there, I started, you know, using like organic cottons, non-toxic um, dyes, uh, recycled fabrics and stuff like that. And also, as my company grew, I decided to start giving 10 to 20 percent of the profits um, from my business to local and global charities and environmental organizations. Excellent. So as you know by now, One Spark is all about entrepreneurs, it's about startups, it's about making ideas come to life. So we're so excited to bring you to One Spark this year. Tell me a little bit about advice that you have for entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs that want to get started with their ideas. Uh, what would you tell them? My advice for young entrepreneurs that want to get started with their business is, you know, every um, great business starts with ideas, and everybody has ideas that they want to share with the world. They're always, you know, we always have something like holding us back, like, oh, the idea might be dumb or crazy, maybe nobody will like it, I don't know if I can really pull this off or achieve this. And, you know, I really think that you should just go for it. I mean, I started my company. I was eight years old. I, you know, didn't have a business plan. I just had a passion, and I just had a love for what I did and what I wanted to really uh, accomplish. And so, you know, really pay attention to your ideas. And another thing I like to suggest is um, having an idea journal, um, kind of like writing down all of your ideas, whether they be big or small. Um, and really just really paying attention to those little ideas because you don't know how much they can grow when you really pursue them. Um, and then also next steps, researching the uh, field or industry that you really want to be in, um, finding other people who are, you know, really experienced in that field and reaching out to them. You know, you can get mentors that way too. And, um, you know, from there just... Uh, attending events like One Spark, um, and you know, listening to what other entrepreneurs um, have to say and what other advice they have to give. Awesome! I love that idea of a of a journal. I love to journal. I think that's so important for you to capture all these ideas and all of this energy that you have in your head. So when you're journaling and when you're, you're coming up with all these ideas, obviously your company Maya's Idea Shop. How do you know kind of what separates a great idea from an idea that maybe you won't pursue? What gives you that impulse to really follow on an idea and put it to action? That's a really good question, actually. I don't think I've even really gotten that question before. The way I can uh, tell the difference uh, between, you know, okay, that's a pretty cool idea, and that's just the best idea I've had in like a really long time. Um, I can really visualize that idea coming to life. Because sometimes you have an idea, and it's just still kind of, you know, just, I mean, of course, it's always going to be, like, floating around your head until you do something about it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have those ideas where you can really, really visualize it and see it um, really happening, you know, and existing in the real world. Mm -hmm. And it's not just kind of a nebulous, off-top-of-your-head thing that, you know, uh, might not really work out as well. And you just really have a good about it and you kind of have, you know, um, a little bit of your own kind of uh, guidance as to how you can make that idea really come to life. I think those are the things that really separate the ideas um, from a good idea or a not so good idea. Right. And then I'm sure it's also about sometimes you think something might be a really great idea and it turns out that it doesn't work out so well. And so you just kind of have to learn from that failure. I mean, sometimes failure can be one of our biggest teachers, especially when we're going for big ideas, right? 
Yeah, I definitely like to uh, speak on that as well because uh, people tend to forget that their failures and you know their hits and misses and trials and errors are what really help them grow as a person, as an entrepreneur. Um, and it's you really gain a lot of experience. Even if that idea turned out to be a flop, you still gain a lot of experience from that that you can apply to your future projects that will be a lot better. Absolutely. That's one of the things that I think is so cool about OneSpark is you kind of get this ability where it's all condensed down and you can throw your ideas out there and get feedback from so many people at once and, and really try and put it out there in the world. So I'm excited for you to, to share some of this with us when you come here. Um, so tell me, you know, obviously Speaker Summit, we're coming up April 7th. It'll be here before we know it. I'm really excited. I'm excited to finally meet you in person. Who are you excited about now that you've had a chance to kind of look at the slate of speakers? Who have you been down to get to know when you come here? I think everybody has pretty much said this, but of course it's Daniel Johns, the famous Shark Tank um, guy, because I've wanted to actually meet him for a while now and to know we're going to be like speaking pretty much on the same stage, probably not together, but on the same stage. <laughs> uh, it's going to be uh, really awesome for me. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's a really popular answer, but that is the main person looking forward to. Cool, that's great. And you know, another question that I had for you is how do you sort of balance being such a young entrepreneur and business owner with education? Are you going to school right now? Are you getting homeschooled? How are you able to balance all this in your life? So I'm actually homeschooled and I've been homeschooled from the start, believe it or not, but it just happened to work out with what has transpired since the start and um, so I, I've always been uh, homeschooled and my education always comes first I do about you know four hours of school work with my parents and I also have like a, some online courses that I take as well and after that after the four hours I move on to working on my company um, and all of my other ideas for a few hours and then I move on to just hanging out being a little teen hang out with my friends or drawing or reading or playing video games, stuff like that. That's kind of just like a you know, average day. Yeah. And it, I mean, when you do things like, you know, learning to code or working on your website, do you ever find that separation in your brain from things that you're learning and things that you want to learn? Or is it all just one big learning experience for you? I think we all have like, you know, the favorite subject mm -hmm. um, and personally my favorite subjects are like art and art history. Also, I really love um, languages, learning different languages. Um, I'm, you know, expounding on my Spanish um, vocabulary and um, also coding is fun for me as well. And also I do animation and with that, uh, my animation also counts as schoolwork as well because of the whole... Uh, computers and learning and, and flash and all these other animation programs as well so that counts those are like my favorite subjects yeah and I love that your animation has a social message too usually right you're usually doing it to spread um, ideas that people need to hear about or are sort of presenting information in a new way that it's maybe more accessible to people that might be interested in watching it animated yeah, um, and a, a good example of that is an animation I'm currently working on called The Pollinators, and it's about bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, uh, all pollinators, um, and why they're so important to us and our environment, agriculture, etc. But to make it really cool and entertaining, they're like a superhero team of pollinators, and I premiered a clip of uh, the pollinators during my latest TED Talk, and I have another animation uh, I'm still working on kind of on and off called Malicious Dishes and it's about viruses of the computer and if they had their own little world and you know what would they do in that world and they go on different adventures um, so that one is a little bit less I guess kind of you know social or whatever but it's still you know talking about like technology and I think it's really fun um, for everybody who's really into coding or t and technology Awesome. So we got a question in online um, while I'm interviewing you here, and that question's from Doc, and he wanted to know, how do you start your mornings, or sort of how do you get into that creative zone? What gets you going? That's a really good question. Okay, so what gets me in a creative zone? Well, in the morning, I do like to um, really 
you know, relax, clear my mind. So, so after I let out my dog and feed all of my, my feed all of my pets and everything, um, I do you know yoga and I meditate and just try to really have a good energy, get a good energy going for the day. Um, and uh, I look, something I always like to do is um, kind of uh, write down you know a lot of stuff that I might want to accomplish in the day, just like in a little book. I like to write stuff down because it just kind of seems to affirm stuff for me. Um, and then just, you know, throughout the day, I always try to keep a creative energy going as much as I can. I might take a second to you know, maybe like doodle out an idea that I had. I, I, as much as possible, I try not to keep my ideas just locked in my brain constantly because I feel like it really helps to try to bring them to life. So even if you have like you had a dream about you know an animation you want to make, just doodle that on a napkin or something, and you know I, that that kind of stuff really helps. Just kind of so centering yourself, getting your ideas out of your head and um, just basically trying to keep the creative energy going at all times. I love that. You know, one of the things that really comes to my mind when I look at your TED Talks and when I look at your business is fearless. I think that's a really good word to describe you because you've just gone for it. You haven't really let things hold you back, whether it be your age or your level of experience or whatever, you've gone for it. And I think that maybe some of that comes from what you're talking about. You're not afraid to just kind of unlock the power of those ideas that you have, you're yeah. willing to just kind of let them out there. Yeah, definitely, and that that's because um, I still get nervous about some stuff. I mean, that's totally it's totally human to you know be unsure of something or to have doubts um, about your ideas. I'm not 100% confident in myself all the time, but I really think that it's important for me to you know, express myself and share my ideas with the world because I noticed, you know, when I do that, it, you know, it really helps me um, grow. And that's something I like to share a lot with other uh, people, too, when I talk, to really just go for it and to just share your ideas with the world because, I mean, you might think they're really crazy, but there's going to be some people out there who really support you and know you have a passion and a love for what you do. Absolutely. You know, the other thing yeah. I love is that... Um, you know, even though you said like you, you're not confident every day, um, but you're willing to put your ideas out there. You're willing to to get out there and make things happen. You know, not only for yourself, but sort of for the greater good. You know, I know somebody that is exactly your age, and uh, she's someone that's very important to me. And she's having a tough time right now. You know, it's not an easy age. There's lots of societal pressure. There's lots of peer pressure, um, issues with bullying. Um, it's it's tough to kind of you know to go through those teenage years so you know what do you have you know not just for entrepreneurs but just for people that are your age that are you know struggling against all these other forces what kind of message do you have just for them I do know that you know that you're never going to go through life without any kind of peer pressure or you know somebody who's against you um, and you know people see me like on the TED stage and they uh, like automatically might think that just everybody supports me you know that's not totally true and the way that you know that you're really you know doing something in the world is if you have haters um, too um, and people who want to really drag you down and you know stop you from sharing your ideas with the world and you know I always just say that you have to do it afraid, and I've done, you know, so many things afraid. And people have, you know, also told me, like, you know, you went on the TED Talk, and you seem so calm. Like, how do you stay so calm? And I was not calm at all, actually. <laughs> I, I don't know. I have a thing where I'm able to just um, seem really calm, but on the inside, I was, like, shaking in my boots, or Tom's at the time, <laughs> not actual boots. But, um, but you know... I, I think that you can get to a point where you just really have to believe in yourself and what you're doing and surround yourself with like-minded people who, you know, really support you and support your ideas um, because those are, you know, the people who will help you get back up after someone has, you know, maybe criticized you or bash you about, you know, just what you love and what you are really passionate about. So, yeah. 
Awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to take a cue from you on April 7th when I'm shaking in my toms, getting ready to go up on that stage. And so I'm going to take some some Zen inspiration from Maya. So thank you for that. So tell us, you know, before we kind of get to close out here, tell us what's next for your business. What's next for Maya's ideas? Where are you going? So what's next for Maya's ideas? Um, well, my idea is just continuing to, I'm just continuing to grow and create my new clothing lines, but um, at the moment I'm working on another uh, project with my nonprofit, uh, My Ideas for the Planet, where I'm making like uh, eco-friendly um, sanitary pads for girls in developing countries because um, I learned um, a few years ago about how girls can't go to school on their cycle because they don't have any pads to wear. And it doesn't seem that like a big thing here, but it's huge for people. Um, in developing countries and I've partnered with an organization called MedShare um, and they're really awesome and they're going to be um, um, distributing the pads to the girls so that's one project I'm working on um, at the moment and another just one um, last project I'm working on um, I've signed a book deal um, with a major publisher Congratulations. and I'm going to be working on um, a book so I'm going to be releasing it sometime, hopefully this year, and it's about my journey as a young entrepreneur and as a teenager in general, I guess. So yeah, those are two things that I'm really working on. That's fantastic. That's such good news to hear. I'm really excited for you, and we'll be waiting for that. Can't wait to see till it comes out. So thanks so, so much for joining us here today. Appreciate it. Thanks for hanging in there with our tech issues. Um, we are really, really looking forward to bringing you here to Jacksonville. There's a lot of energy happening right now. We're excited. We're ready to get things going. And of course, it all just starts bursting at the seams at one spark. So it's a perfect time for you to come into town, um, meet some people, and share some of this uh, wonderful knowledge that you've learned on your journey. So thanks, Maya. Thank you so much. It's been really awesome, you know, speaking with you today, and I'm excited for one spark. Awesome. We'll see you on April seventh. Thanks for tuning in.